Hey guys, so um, I've had a lot of requests to do a black background um, photo for a confirmation or sale photo for a horse. Um, this is very popular right now and I don't foresee it becoming unpopular for a long time. So let's get started. Um, I have brought this photo into Photoshop from Lightroom by pressing Command E. It's the keyboard shortcut to do that from Lightroom to Photoshop and Command W back to Lightroom. So as you can see, I have distorted this image um, in uh, the transform module within Lightroom. So I've made it a little flatter, a little, a little different. <clears throat> so um, when I do these, I I put them in, I put the horse in um, something dark background, a uh, barn front or door opening. Um, this is the feed room, clearly. <laughs> and um, I will magically make uh, these individuals disappear. So first thing I'm going to do is create a layer. Um, you can do this by doing uh, shift command N or shift option command N E to bring all the layers up. Um, preference, preference. So um, the second thing I'm going to do is come over to the gradient tool. Now, this is a neato little tool. You can right click to throw out this little window. Um, and I click on the gradient tool, not these two, but this one. So then I wanna make sure that my brushes are on default. If they are not, you can use the keyboard shortcut D. D is in dog, press D on your keyboard. And it will um, put these to the default black and white. For example, if I do that, it's not the default. I press D and it takes it to the default. So as you can see, this little plus sign, I am gonna take it in the middle of the image up here, all the way at the top, and I'm gonna drag it all the way down. The farther you drag it down, the more of a gradient you're going to get. Now, as you can see, it's flat, it's straight across. So I'm gonna bring um, a few gradients in from the sides and to just kind of give uh, the illusion that it's just a bit rounder. I want it like a crescent moon almost. So it will hide a lot of that background. So you can play with this. Um, so I'm happy with that. I will fix this light spot um, later. And now I'm going to put a mask on my gradient layer. I am going to press the B button for brush, brush, B on your keyboard. I am going to size my brush, which if you want to check out my other tutorials, you can to do that um, on how to size a brush. Um, I'm gonna press the zero key to make sure that I am at 100% opacity flow. And I am going to press the X key to go to the black so I can paint away what I want to see. I want to see this horse. So I'm gonna very rough handedly do this. Um, and now guys, there are a lot of ways to do this in Photoshop. This is just one of them. It may not be the fastest one. I know there are different ways. This is just what is most efficient for me. Um, so I understand that this may not be efficient for you, but this is what works for me. So. With that being said, I will move forward. I am going to zoom in here and I'm gonna press the X key so then I have the white. I'm gonna be brushing back in um, some of this black. So I'm just gonna rough handed, you know, freehand, just paint back in um, some of this and get a little closer and do some of the work. This is a tedious job, guys. It's a tedious job. So I'm just doing that and brushing back in some of my shadow that I've created here, or background, whatever you wanna call it. So um, this is gonna be a lengthier video. Uh, usually I do short videos because I don't think that anybody has the attention span to last more than 15 minutes on a tutorial. I don't, I am dyslexic and I can't sit still, so. I have ADD, <laughs> um, and I just lose attention very quickly. But this is a little bit more time consuming. So I'm gonna come in here close, I'm gonna size down my brush. I have found that if your brush is too hard, it makes very jagged edges, and it's hard to use. So I like to have my brush pretty soft, and I like to have it pretty small. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that brush and make my first spot. And then I'm going to click it again and hold down the shift key. This makes a straight line. And I'm going to go around the horse making a straight line by clicking. And then on the second click, I hold shift. I keep holding shift every time I want to create a line. So I am pretty much just keeping my um, hand, my left hand, hovering over the shift key on the keyboard. If you look at some like really talented Photoshopping people, um, you will notice that their hands, their left hand um, will hover over the left uh, corner, bottom corner of the keyboard and because that's where all the magic happens. <laughs> so um, as you can see, there's some brown here. So I'm just gonna fill that in, freehand it and not holding down the shift. Um, so yeah. Okay, so now we have um, made a black background around this horse's face on this side. I'm going to keep going around the nose. Um, there's some things that I freehand and there's some things that I do the shift and click for to create straight lines. Um, when there is hair I want to um, get rid of, I freehand. Um, and then we don't want this clip. Um, usually um, I would get rid of that in if I didn't have a black background, I would get rid of that um, using the stamp tool, um, which I have done in my other tutorials if you would like to learn that. So I'm just coming in here, um, freehanding this once again, and just getting real close to the neck. So now I'm gonna come in here and do the shift again, straight lines, shift. I'm just, I'm, hol I'm holding down the shift now. So every time I click, the line is straight. Um, and if that is still confusing, here, let me show you something. Let me just finish, because I'm actually doing this for a client. Um, all right, so I'm gonna press the X because I kind of was freehanding it and got onto the horse. So I'm painting away that, pressing the X to go back to black. Um, I am going to show you what I mean with the shift by using the red here. Okay, so we've got, um, I'm gonna just create um, a layer that I'll get rid of um, <clears throat> for the sake of learning. Okay, so I have a red dot. Say I wanna make a straight line to down here. I click here once, and now on my second click, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna press the shift key down, and I'm gonna click again, straight line. So now I'm holding the shift key down, and I'm gonna click again holding the shift key down, clicking again, and holding the shift key down, clicking again, which makes it easier for, to fill in this box. Get it? Cool. I'm gonna erase this by pressing delete. Going back on my masked layer. Really important, if you're over here, you're not gonna be able to brush, but it, you need to be on your masked layer. Okay, so back to work. Um, I'm gonna press the D key to make these back to default, black and white, and the X key to paint with black. I'm gonna size and soften my brush. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hold down, oops. Um, I'm gonna click and I'm sorry, the white is um, to brush on here. So click and I'm holding down shift the entire time, creating my straight lines. Um, so this is time consuming. Yes, I know. Trust me, this is, I've, I've got a lot of these to do. I know, but it's just the way that I do things. I have also done um, some pretty intense uh, selections and done it that way as well. Um, that actually takes me longer. So I prefer doing it this way. Um, I've seen others do it this way and I've seen others do it very, very different ways. So. Um, I think when it comes to photography, uh, there is always room to learn and improve. And if you pick up something in this tutorial that you did not know before, you are winning at life. That is learning, my friends. So um, always keep learning. It is so important to learn. Um, a lot of photographers uh, these days did not have formal education on these things, but lucky for you guys, we live in the digital age and you can YouTube life. 
So um, I learn so much on YouTube and I hope you guys are learning right now. So as you can see, I am just shift clicking my little heart out and outlining this horse. <clears throat> um, and so when a client asks for a black background, this is how I do. And I'm just going around this horse. And then if you, you guys see me moving my screen, I'm press, pressing the space, sorry, I can't talk. I'm pressing down on the space bar and I am uh, space bar and then clicking and then dragging and moving. So um, there's a little tricky trick for you. Learning all the keyboard shortcuts these days. So keyboard shortcuts, guys, like this makes you efficient and fast. Everybody wants to be faster, right? Like we all want our workflow to be faster. <clears throat> um, just throwing it out there, these black background dealios, I will be doing at my workshop. Dates are tentative because of the Rona, um, but uh, since we're all sitting here, I thought I would talk a little bit about it. Um, the workshop will be in San Ynez, California. Um, like I said, the dates are kind of in up in the air right now, but I will be planning that workshop here in the next year. Um, and I am going, it's hopefully going to be three days, if not two days. Um, but what I'll do is we're going to have, um, we're going to have, it's an equestrian based photography workshop. So we will have some fancy ponies and we'll do some sunset shoots, some sunrise shoots. Um, it will be geared more towards the Western lifestyle um, because that's what I know, yo. And um, we will be doing a lot of technical work. There are not a lot of uh, photographer retreats or workshops out there that are very technical. Um, I will be throwing in some pretty magical shoots in there, um, but I also want to focus pretty heavily on the technical aspect. Um, I want um, all of my attendees to feel like they got something like very, got some skills out of this workshop. That is my ultimate goal. Um, so I'm thinking uh, day one, everybody's going to arrive and we're gonna go do a sunset shoot with some fancy ponies up in the hills in San Ynez. Um, we'll come back, we'll have dinner and chill and hang out at the really neat um, place in San Ynez that I've chosen. And then day two, we will wake up in the morning um, and do class time. So we'll have breakfast in the morning and some downtime. And then about um, nine o'clock, we will do class time. And I am going to teach you guys my workflow. So um, just how I edit um, and go over a few questions about that. And then we'll go out and shoot super quick little black background shoot um, with a horse. And we'll edit that together at some point or whatever works. And then um, we'll come back, do some class time. I'm going to go over, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about running your photography business. Um, uh, I specialize in digital asset management. So I'm going to teach you how to back up and be safe with your hard drives and how to use them and create uh, Lightroom uh, catalogs and, and just how to be efficient and proficient with that. Um, so there's that and then we will shoot again in the evening and then the next day we'll have some more um we will do a, a sunrise shoot with some fancy ponies come back and edit that for a little while have some downtime and some class time i'm going to teach you um how to have happy clients and never run into the where are my photos thing because that's frustrating so i'm going to teach you my workflow with my clients and um, how i have a faster turnaround rate than most and how i achieve that and make them very happy and my process with working with brides um, and then the last day we'll just do a, a quick morning shoot and a little send off and a bunch of questions free for all question 
hour and that that'll be it. So it's going to be a pretty neat, it's going to be a pretty neat workshop. Um, I'm going to have some really cool horses and models come in. Um, I will do like a Western ranch, uh, styled wedding shoot. Um, so that'll be something, uh, great for your portfolio if that's wanting you're wanting to do. Um, so a lot of, a lot of cool stuff black background like we're doing right now. I will teach you how to pose these animals and how to get ears up and um, because this is really frustrating sometimes with ears, especially if you're working with a younger horse. Uh, this is a yearling. So I'll teach you all about how to get ears up and how to pose them confirmationally correct. And if these are sale photos, they have to be a certain way and you need a certain amount of images and you do not want to mess that up. Get home and be like, <laughs> just kidding, forgot one. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of my jam about the upcoming workshop. It's going to be really neat. I'm really excited. Um, so back to our editing here, the ears, I use a soft brush and I don't um, get in very close. Um, down here with the hair because if I if I do make that a really straight line it just looks weird to me so um so yeah I am just kind of freehanding up here and then soft brushing that in because shadows are good um so we have gotten the face done here as you can see our face is looking very great now we're just kind of working on legs um, our legs are pretty much done except for the hind end tail is difficult my friends tail is always a hard one um you want to not lose that tail but it's also a shadow and it's the furthest point away from the horse so i don't know if any of you are art history buffs but um there is a technique um I think it's called Kirikuzo or Kirikuzo. I don't even know. You'd have to Google it. But it's um, making it uh, look further away in the background that it would naturally shade further away. And it's the style of creating that. So, um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna um, use like a 30% brush to um, get that, achieve that look. So I'm just... Filling in the blanks here. Does this uh, take you guys back to like kindergarten where we're like really trying hard to just stay in the lines? This is what kindergarten was preparing us for. Yeah, little did you know. So just painting all this in. Sometimes it's okay if that brush softness kind of gets on the leg because it is a shadow creating tool. So I'm going to go kind of around this tail. Oh, tails, man, tails. It's rough. I don't like me some tails. Okay, we're getting closer. So I actually blocked off the window in this barn, but clearly um, the light shifted. And uh, that doesn't matter anymore because we got this uh, light patch, which we're going to fix. And we're going to make our people disappear, too. Okay, getting closer, ladies and gentlemen. Getting closer. Can you hear my dog snoring in the background? Because she's rather loud. It's kind of distracting. <laughs> okay, so that tail is in there. It's just dark. Um, it's a darker, this this mare is like, you know, like a red roan. She's like a purpley red roan. So I'm just super soft brushing in um, the light away from that. And then what I'll do now is go in, press the three key on the keyboard, which will take this opacity down to 30%, and I will just kind of brush away um, those lighter spots, but keeping the tail in there, doing the best that I can do, and then I'll brush back in um, this leg since I needed that shadowy thing to work out for me. Okay, so um, that's, you know, this, this mare, just her tail, it's just, it's darker. So, I mean, it's, it's in there. It's just, 
it's a darker tail, so it's, it's hard to see it, but um, it kind of is what it is. Um, let's see. So, guys, we have um, painted in the lines here, and uh, there we go. Um, I actually have had a special request from this client that she wants to see the tails on these horses. So we are going to work on that later. But as of right now, um, we have outlined our horse and created the black background. Now we're going to make people disappear. So I'm going to press shift option command and E and I'm going to bring all these layers up to this layer right there. And I am going to press the, um, yeah, there we go. So just gonna fix my ground here a little bit. There we go, fixing the ground. Okay, so that looks a little better to me. Um, but now I, I'm not super stoked with the fact that the horse is like all the way on this side. So I'm gonna press the C key again. I'm going to make my canvas bigger. Um, so there you go. Um, and now it's way too big and I want to make it shorter on that side. Put the horse in the middle and I'm gonna press the uh, and I'm just gonna stamp. Oops, I gotta make a new layer. Stamp and fix in here. Okay, guys. So um, we have a tail and we have a horse. Now I can work on the horse. There's a few brown spots on this horse, but I also don't want to remove, um, you know, these little patches, these big ones. That's that is on the horse, and if. Um, you need to send in registration photos. Uh, that's what the horse looks like. Now you can remove a few uh, scars. You know, roans, they they scar and then they have brown spots um, from being in the pasture, you know, playing with their buddies and that kind of stuff. So, but we've got a big manure spot here. So I'm going to click the patch tool and I am going to um, replace that hair. So, yeah, and then we've got a manure spot over here too. Um, when you're using the patch tool, try to replace it with something that's close next to it so the grain of hair is going um, the correct way. Um, so I am just taking out any little scabs or tiny little scars, but not um, big uh, markings that identify the horse. Um, yeah, so just taking out some stuff and making this pony, if it could be any prettier. Guys, this is a yearling. How gorgeous is this little filly? Um, so, yeah, I'm just taking out some stuff, cleaning up our eye. Um, the people that work for this ranch, they are really great at fitting these horses and getting them all um, pretty before I come out. Um, and I, I shave their little noses for them, as you can see. See, <laughs> I shaved their little whiskers off. <clears throat> so we've got a very majestic creature here. Uh, we've got a tail and um, I'm gonna take my um, do uh, dodge and burn tool. So um, this is my burn tool and I am gonna press the one key for the exposure up here um, to 10 and I'm going to brighten this horse's face. Um, I'm going to brighten the neck area a little bit so we stand out. And then I'm going to come in here and press the four key for 40% exposure. I'm going to slide it to my brush down and I'm going to play with the bottom highlight in this horse's eyeball and make, make her sparkle. Um, as you can see, that eye just looks very alive now. <clears throat> Okay, guys, um, so this is this is my pony. Um, we look pretty special. And um, this is before and after. Some pretty dramatic results there. Um, I'm happy. So um, the last thing that I'm going to do is shift option command and E. And I am going to come up to filter. I'm sorry you cannot see it, but it's the top bar. And I'm going to go down to other and then high pass. Um, I have it set at 2.8 radius, pixels, whatever. I'm gonna press okay. Don't freak out, it's gonna turn your screen gray. And um, I'm gonna zoom in here and see what it will be sharpening. This is a sharpening layer, sorry I did not say that before. I'm gonna come over to here where it says normal. 
And I'm going to go down to soft light and um, just show you the difference. It just sharpens everything much sharper. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see it. Big difference. I'm happy. I am done. I'm going to press Command W and it's going to save it back to Lightroom. Very slowly, very slowly back to Lightroom. Um, so we're going to come over here to Lightroom. Sorry about my messy desktop. I'm trying to keep it mess less messy for you guys. Um, okay, so this is our before and light, uh, Photoshop is still sh saving it over. So um, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, this is way too much space around this horse. I'm going to press the R key because we're in Lightroom. We're not Photoshop to crop. And I am going to crop down. Make this horse look majestic. And um, so that, guys, is our finished product before and after. And um, as you can see with my organization, I have finished that. I'm going to put it in my finals. So um, I hope that was super informative for you guys. Um, please let me know what you learned in the comments. It helps me teach. Um, and if this is super exciting and you're stoked, let me know that too. And um, follow uh, my YouTube channel for more tutorials. And um, remember to go to my website and um, throw me your email in the subscribers list because I will be doing that workshop in the near future. Um, hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time.